To get started, I will be using one and a half pounds of beef. The cut of beef I'm using is beef shank, and this is also the center of the bones from the beef shank. I will be using this to render for fat in this recipe. Next, I will be using salt and pepper to taste. Basically, you want to use your salt and pepper to your preference. I'm also going to be using one small onion and three small Roma tomatoes. I will be dicing those and chopping them to go into this recipe. Next, I will be using four minced cloves of garlic, three to four works. These were four small cloves. I'm also going to be using two and a half tablespoons of all-purpose flour, one beef bouillon cube. You could also substitute the three cups of water for just beef broth of your choice, but I'm using bouillon and water. I'm also using one teaspoon of ground cumin. And again, you can adjust this to your taste. And I'm going to be adding three cups of water. Again, substitute the bouillon cube and the water for three cups of beef broth. Okay, here I have a large skillet preheating and I'm going to add that fat right from the center of that bone from the beef shank. If you're not using beef shank, cause you could also use like stew meat, beef stew meat, you could also just add some oil to the pan, maybe around a quarter cup. So I'm going to render the fat from this and let this melt down into the pan. Then I'm going to start browning my meat. Okay, so right into the pan goes my meat. And this recipe is good for a pound and a half to two pounds of meat. And if you do end up using two pounds of beef, maybe add an extra half cup of beef broth or water to this and adjust the salt level in the recipe because ultimately it's going to be to your preference. Okay, so now I'm going to add around a half teaspoon of salt and a half teaspoon of pepper. Again, adjust that to your preference. And I am just going to mix and continue browning this on all sides. And I will show you, It'll go through stages. Right now the pan's hot, so it's getting a good sear, but ultimately the natural juices from the meat will release and it'll start getting really watery or liquid in the pan, so it'll stop searing. You wanna keep cooking it and searing it until that juice sort of evaporates and you've rendered a lot of the fat and it starts to get a brown, golden brown crust on the exterior. And this will take some time. Okay, so right about here, I'm around three minutes into browning this meat and it has released a lot of the natural juices from the meat, so it has stopped searing. I'm going to keep cooking this out. By the way, I am working with a high heat and I'm going to keep cooking the juices out until they evaporate and look just like this. So at this point, my meat does have some good searing, it's browned, so I am going to remove it from the pan and continue cooking the rest of the ingredients. Okay, now I'm going to start to saute my fresh ingredients. Here I have my onion, and I'm also going to be adding the fresh garlic, and I am going to give those a head start and saute those for a minute or so. Okay, now I'm going to add my fresh diced tomato. And I do want to mention that you could also add bell pepper to this. You could opt to use some tomato sauce in place of the fresh tomato. You could also add potatoes to this. I've had carne guisada several ways. I literally probably have five different ways I could make this going off of recipes that my tias and tios make and even my mom and my grandmother. But this is the simple way I like to do it. 
So I basically cooked out the onion, garlic, and tomato for around five minutes. I'm going to add another tablespoon of oil right to the center of the pan. And now I'm going to break down that beef bouillon cube. Now, if you do not like to use bouillon, again, you can opt to use beef broth, the beef broth or beef stock of your choice. Just be sure to adjust the salt in this recipe because one thing about using nor bouillon cubes, they do uh, come very salty. So you really don't have to add tons of salt after using it in, in this recipe or in any recipe. But if you're using something like a low sodium beef broth or stock, just adjust the salt level to your taste. Okay, so I've basically broken down the beef bouillon cube and mixed it and combined it well. So I'm going to add my meat right back into the pan. I'm going to give everything a mix and continue breaking down the onion and tomato as I start to combine everything. Okay, so now that everything is combined, I'm going to add my all-purpose flour. The flour is going to help thicken any sauce in the pan and the water that I'm using to create a delicious gravy for this. Now I'm just going to combine the flour and continue cooking it out for around a minute or so. And once it starts to form a crust at the bottom of the pan, that is a good indication to start adding your water. Be sure to check the description below this video for all the ingredients and measurements used in this recipe. I'm going to start by adding half of my water and just working it in and combining it with the meat and the flour that I cooked out. This will help prevent lumps. So you want to slowly just combine it well. And I am going to scrape the sides of this pan because that is delicious fond that will add tons of flavor and even color to this dish. Okay, so while I continue to stir and combine everything, I just wanted to mention that I will be leaving the link to my original carne guisada video, the very first one I put on YouTube. If you wanna check that video out, the link will be in the description below this video along with the ingredients and measurements for the current recipe that I'm doing now. Okay, so now that everything is combined, I just wanna make sure all the meat is submerged as best as I can get it here in the pan. I'm going to push that down. And you want to bring this up to a simmer, just like this. Once it comes up to a simmer, I'm going to cover it with this lid. By the way, this lid actually goes to something else, but it does fit pretty close on this pan. And now I'm going to lower the heat. Now the heat adjustment will vary from stove to stove. Right now I put it on a three, but ultimately I will be lowering it to a one because if you see that it's starting to rapidly boil with the lid on, you want to lower it because it will burn at the bottom of the pan. So here I've already lowered it around 10 minutes into the cook time. I didn't lift the lid. I can just tell it's going a little too rapid. I want it at a gentle simmer and I'm simmering this for one hour or until you reach the desired tenderness of the carne guisada. One hour usually does the trick for me, but again, there are many variables. Depending how high you have your heat, you may have to add another half cup of water 
Now here it has been simmering for one hour and I'm going to skim off some of the rendered fat from the top and it's pretty much done. The thickness of the gravy is exactly where I like it, but if you do find that the gravy is too thin, uncover it and let it keep simmering until you reach the desired thickness of gravy or the texture. And if you feel like it's too thick and it's starting to burn throughout the cooking process, add a little more liquid. So my meat is fork tender and this is after one hour of a gentle simmer. It is so delicious and this is the way I love to make it. I'm serving this alongside an easy Mexican rice recipe that I will be putting out soon and a fresh salad. I hope you guys give this recipe a try. I hope you like it and thanks for watching.